let's uh, start sharing this screen then. Uh, can you see the presentation okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good, okay. Um, right, I, um, I'm not an electronics professional. I, re I retired about seven years ago and I've been doing uh, a lot of amateur TV since, but I first started at the age of 14. So I've been doing it as a hobby uh, for most of my life. Um, and uh, amateur TV is my aspect of amateur radio that I really enjoy. So uh, let, let's crack on. That's me uh, out portable uh, somewhere near Gloucester being received 135 kilometers away on 10 gigs is the picture. Uh, let's see if we can get a, the next slide. Right, what I'm going to cover then is, yeah, what, what is ATV? Uh, what bands we use, what modes we use, and give you some practical examples, and then talk about how you receive it and uh, some of the projects we've been working on and how you would fit it into your normal station. Um, so this amateur TV thing, what is it? Well, it's a like amateur radio. It's got a lot in it. Some people are really into video production um, and editing nice videos and stuff. Uh, it's not my cup of tea. I'm more into the transmission side. Uh, we've got a couple of members with some classic TV cameras, some of which have even appeared on Antiques Roadshow. Um, but at the other end of the scale, we've been trans. There's a team in Switzerland that've been transmitting live pictures from a rocket using some of our kit. Um, there's lots of freedom for it to experiment. There's not a lot of commercial gear. I'll come back to that. Um, when we talk about ATV, we're generally talking about fast scan TV. So the sort of pictures you're watching tonight, pictures that move and generally have sound with them. It's not the slow scan stuff. Um, and the other thing I'll refer to is digital, is DATV, which is digital ATV, which is the way everything's going. Don't be scared by it. It's uh, not so bad. So what can you do with ATV? Well, if you've got a typical home station, you can get pictures sort of 30 to 50 miles on 70 SEMs. Um, we've now got a band just above uh, 144 megs at 146 megs. And we reckon that if you can get a fully quieting uh, FM signal through you can get pictures and stereo uh, sound through on 146 megs so it's not that limiting uh, when you're out portable which is what i tend to mainly do um 80 to 100 miles is is commonplace on uh, any band essentially up to 10 gigs but a reasonably recent development is we now have a satellite transponder that we can use 24 7 um q100 and we can get pictures from Brazil, Greece, India, all sorts. So uh, I'll look at that. All okay. Um, given Tropo, things get a lot better. Um, the, these were some pictures received on the North York Moors um, or during an opening in 2018. Um, top left one there is in uh, Torquay in Devon. Um, and the two on the right-hand side are from Somerset, one on 10 gigs and one on 146 megs. So if we get a lift, it really does go well. Um, but uh, generally, we get the ranges I've just referred to. We do it on most of the VHF and UHF bands. Um, we've recently started some transatlantic tests on 28 megs. This is almost tending towards slow scan. We have had some move, one set of moving pictures across the Atlantic to the States. Um, 50, 71 and 146 megs go pretty well. Um, 70 SEMs is the traditional band for it, but 23, 13, and all the way up to 122 are possible. Uh, most of the repeaters tend to be on 23, 13, and 9. Um, a lot of the uh, portable operation is on 5.6 and 10 gigs on, on 6 sems and 3 sems. So uh, there's lots of variety on the bands there. And we have some TV repeaters. Um, they're generally, their inputs are on uh, 23 sem. 
uh, with three point or 70 SEM with um, 23 SEM, 3.4 gigs or 10 gigs outputs. Uh, the nearest one to you is on uh, Markfield, and I'll uh, cover that a bit more in a while. So uh, GB3GV is up at Markfield. It is active, uh, had a look at it earlier today. Um, co-located with the, the other repeaters up there. I was pleased to see GB3UM um, a long, long time ago. I used to have a weekly sked with G5UM when he was at Horton on the Hill um, when I was in London. And that used to go most, most weeks on uh, two meters. Um, now, GV, you probably know, eight kilo K northwest of Leicester, as people tell me. It is streamed on the internet, um, both on the BATC website and on its own website. Um, it transmits in 23 SEMs in digital and has three different inputs. And I'll cover how we might get into those in a while. Has anybody uh, seen pictures from GB3GV at all? Yes. Oh, great. So how do we transmit this funny TV stuff? Well, um, in the old days, um, in the old days, when I started <laughs> in four or five lines, um, it used to be amplitude modulation. Uh, we now rarely use amplitude modulation because it takes up a lot of room. Sorry. Yep. Oh, is this a, just somebody moving around. Okay. Good evening. Um, we rarely use amplitude modulation. Uh, it takes up a lot of room in the band, which we haven't got. Um, frequency mod, yep, uh, still used on 23 SEMs and on 3 SEMs. Um, and more recently on 6 centimeters using the, the drone kit. Uh, one point to note is the IC905, the super expensive rig that ICOM are bringing out in the summer does do FM amateur TV um, if you've got very deep pockets. Um, so uh, it's far cheaper to build it. Uh, but di digitally, we use uh, DVBS and DVBS2 on all bands at various bandwidths. Now, the, these are generally used by the commercial operators for satellite, uh, but they work very well for amateur terrestrial. Uh, People think that DVB-T, which is used by the commercial operators for terrestrial, should work better for us. Uh, we haven't found that to be the case in practice, although we have been using it for a few mobile tests and on the lower bands. One other aspect that we find useful to get people into the hobby and to broaden the spread is that we internet stream most of our repeaters and some of the uh, key uh, events. And the BATC run a uh, website which uh, hosts all the internet stream, oh, a lot of internet streamers. There are other sites, but we've got most in the world. Now, one of the terms we'll use is reduced bandwidth TV. This is digital TV, the, where we've taken the commercial standard uh, and squash the bandwidth up. Now, the, the commercial operators you know, want uh, both high definition and fast moving pictures. Now, we're not generally um, televising Formula One or uh, football or the tennis or anything. So we've generally got moving heads like the picture you're watching at the moment. Um, so we don't need as much bandwidth. So uh, we've taken the standard beyond the standard and reduced the bandwidth. Now, we can do live TV easily in 500 kilohertz um, and more recently down in about 150 kilohertz with some technical advances we've had in the last couple of months. So it is the commercial standard, but pushed to the limit. Um, now, normal satellite receivers won't work below one me mega symbol. That's about one and a half megs bandwidth. Um, so normal, um, and I'm not talking about, here about a skybox. I'm talking about a free-to-air satellite receiver. Skyboxes are all locked down, unfortunately. Um, 
but a normal satellite receiver, for example, will receive GB3 GV. But we've developed our own uh, receivers and the printed circuit board you can see there is the uh, mini tune receive tuner and that connects to a computer by USB to uh, receive this narrow bandwidth stuff. We've also developed a, uh, a transmitter receiver based on the Raspberry Pi, which we call the Portsdown, and a set-top box receiver that just you know looks like any other satellite set-top box. Well, it looks like whatever you build, actually, but it works just like any other set-top box with, with a remote control like that, um, which will receive amateur TV signals. And as I said, uh, this reduced bandwidth stuff will go if you've got an S9, uh, you know, fully quieting uh, FM audio signal. I said to give you some examples. The first one is a simple one. Um, we found probably about five years ago that the the kit they sell on eBay and uh, AliExpress uh, for getting pictures down from drones. Uh, the first person view drones uh, can be made to work in the six centimeter band. It's uh, fairly easily done with a uh, using a simple uh, video camera or a video monitor. And it will, when the IC905 be compatible with it, clearly not compatible in price. We're talking. Uh, uh, we're about one hundredth of the price of the IC905 to do this. So you typically use one of the transmitters you can see on the right there. It's just a small printed circuit board. It gives about 600 milliwatts at um, 5.6 gigs. You feed a camera and uh, audio in. You select the preset channels on the uh, preselector switch there. And give it 12 volts and it transmits. On uh, receive, again, the receivers have the same set of preset cha channels. You connect it to an aerial and you take video and, out, uh, video and audio out to a monitor. And it all runs on 12 volts. So ideal for playing when you're portable. Um, the sort of kit you, way you'd run it portable, you can see that uh, I think that's a Maplin speaker tripod or something like that on the right with a couple of flat plate aerials. Now, the reason he's got two aerials there is he's got one for transmit, one for receive. Um, the aerials are almost as cheap as a changeover relay. Um, so that's why he's using two aerials. It's cheaper than changeover relay. Uh, I actually use a changeover relay. You can see that in the... Uh, the picture at the bottom there, uh, the little metal KCL thing on the left hand side with the transmitter above it and the receiver just to the right. Uh, the frequency we do it on is uh, 5665 megahertz. Um, that's actually the only bit of, of six centimeters that's big enough for this transmission, which is quite wide bandwidth. It's about 25 megs wide. Um, but line of sight, you can easily do 100 kilometers with this hilltop to hilltop, which is pretty easy. So that's what we do simply. Um, we operate with horizontal polarity and the sort of dish size you can see there, you know, 45 or 60 centimeter dish. You've got four or eight degrees of beam width, so it's pretty easy to point. And if you're listening to the sub sound subcarrier, you can generally peek up to get the best signal uh, by listening to the subcarrier quietening. So uh, uh, pretty uh, easy to get going. We've lost you. You've lost the sound. How about now? Uh, yep, sorry, uh, dodgy USB connection. Uh, thank you for uh, mentioning it. Um, <laughs> right, digital 
TV. Uh, yeah, I've got some captions about me audio. That's all right. Digital TV. Um, we use it for, you, you can use it for local contacts, contacts and for portable and contesting. It'll work on any band actually from 20, 28 megs up to 122. Somebody managed it on 122 recently. Um, so, but um, to set these contacts up, we generally use uh, good old 144 megs FM on 144750 or uh, Zello. Now, Zello, I don't know whether anybody has used Zello. It's like uh, turns your mobile phone into a walkie talkie on, on a common channel. Um, it's when it works, it's great. But on hilltops, you often find that uh, mobile phone signal, you've got too many masts and they're all too far away. Um, so it relies on having good mobile internet. Um, so uh, sometimes 144.75 megs FM is the most reliable. Um, most of all the new repeaters now are digital. Um, and we're running the, the most recent ones are running full high definition. So 1080p HD, just like you'd get on your uh, large screen TV at home. And we can do that in about one and a quarter megs so using one mega symbol DVBS2. Um, if you compare that to GV, which uses four mega symbols, that's a quarter of the bandwidth. So instantly you get another 6 dB in, uh, in gain. A lot of the receivers, uh, repeaters also have multiple receivers. So they'll have one listening in 146 megs, one listening on 437 and one on uh, 23 SEMs. And we automatically switch to whichever one has a uh, valid signal on. Uh, the the picture at bottom left is streaming from uh, GB3JV, which is down in uh, southeast London. Now, the stuff that gets a bit more exciting is um, digital ATV on QO100. Now, has anybody worked um, SSB or CW on QO100? Nope. No. no. Okay. Um, there are two transponders on QO100. Uh, there's the uh, narrowband transponder, which is 500 kilohertz wide. And um, we'll give you uh, SSB and CW coverage for anybody in that um, area in, highlighted on the map. So uh, the, the eastern tip of uh, South America, all of Africa, most of Asia, uh, all of Europe, um, none of Australia, unfortunately, and uh, none of Japan, and no, none of the USA. And uh, the US amateur satellite enthusiasts are really <coughs> smarting that uh, Europe has managed this before them. Um, for TV, we've got a uh, wideband transponder that's nine megs wide. Uh, the uplink for it is 2.4 gigs. And the downlink is at the top end of uh, 10, 10 gigs. Now, there are no spot beams on this, so it covers a third of the Earth. The, the issue with that, though, is that the signal isn't as strong as you'd get from Sky. You know, on Sky, you can manage a 45-centimeter dish and still get pictures from it. Um, for this to receive, you need about a 90-centimeter dish. And to transmit comfortably, you need a 1.2 meter dish. Um, it says they're dedicated to DATV use. Used to be, we said people have started doing some wideband data on it now, um, but not a lot yet. It's just at it, in its early stages. Huh? And this is after the satellite's been up for about four years. We reckon it's probably got a 15-year life, so you've got plenty of time to build your kit and get on there. But uh, it's not going to be there forever, that's for sure. Um, we generally use DVBS2 modulation, um, and that's fairly easy to generate. And uh, the most signals on there occupy about 500 kilohertz, so you can easily get uh, uh, 10. Uh, TV conversations going on at once, uh, which is uh, challenging to, to uh, channel hop through, that's for sure. 
And it's been really good for pushing experimentation on, um, both in uh, terms of video coding, uh, video quality, um, R RF, you know, two people have got a lot better at uh, building 2.4 gigs PAs and uh, on the receive side as well. So on the uh, uplink, as I said, uh, sorry, downlink, 90 centimeter dish, and the standard LNB, the old universal LNB that everybody has used for Astra and used to use for Sky. The new wideband LNBs for Sky aren't any good for it, but the standard LNBs are. Um, and you generally use either a ports down receiver or a mini tuner and a, a PC or the ride set top box receiver. And the sort of pictures you get, uh, you can see there, uh, that's Benno PA3FBX and at the top there from the Netherlands, uh, an Italian guy and uh, Rob M0DTS, him of the North York Moors, all transmitting there. For uh, transmit, 2.4 gigs. Um, you'd use something like the ports down transmitter, which I'll cover, cover in a minute, a Raspberry Pi based transmitter or a PC with a webcam. Um, some sort of software defined radio, a Lime SDR or a Pluto and a power amplifier. And you're looking at uh, 25 in the range, 25 to 50 watts is sort of power you need on 2.4 gigs. But it does mean that ATV is no longer just the guy down the road. It's uh, really worldwide. Uh, right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the sharing. I'm just going to play you a video. Um, please put your thumbs up when you get audio from the video. And this is uh, a recording from the QR100 net or about uh, 18 months ago. Um, Every Thursday night, the BATC have a, uh, a net, uh, starts at eight o'clock. He's streamed online on the BATC streamer, but these pictures were all received off air. So stand by, I shall go back to uh, uh, sharing something else. Let's share this fella here. Uh, Please give me a thumbs up if you get audio from this. Uh, let's run. All from G8GKQ. Are you getting audio from that? Main activity, no. uh, no. getting a... No, nope. uh, okay, let's pause that down. and we'll go back GKQ. and I'll find the audio. Uh, May the sound, yeah. It was out of sync though, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Is that there now? No. 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 Okay. Go. Typical, isn't it? Works before, not now. Uh, hang on a minute. Let's um, just have a look at this. Just let playback. This. Right. Let's just do this again. Share sound. Try this. GKQ. Main activity, uh, getting a uh, yep. Good ports down yeah. out, out the door. Uh, that introduced the uh, C930 camera. Okay, quite a lot of us on tonight, so please try and keep the overs short. Round to Mike, G0MJW. I just thought I'd show you this, since it's topical. Um, this is the latest overall forecast. The ovation forecast from the Met Office after the two uh, space weather events that uh, that happened today. That's going to be a pretty big aurora. And um, good to uh, hear everyone and see everyone. I've seen a few people testing so far, so uh, look forward to uh, seeing what uh, is said. Right, in uh, in the interest of keeping over short, here is the, uh, the bench. Uh, just to show you what's on there. Various bits have arrived this week, but I've not had much chance to do anything. Slightly out of shot. In fact, I shall move it so that it's not out of shot. Here's this. It'll be interesting to see if that's any good. For DATV purposes, it's uh, one of the new Pi Zero Mark IIs. So uh, let's pass it round. Uh, M0YDH, G0MJW. 
Okay, uh, what have I been doing since I last came on? Well, I, I haven't been coming on too often. Um, it's a uh, thing. We'll get. We'll go for a wobbly, shaky cam. And uh, first of all, the all-important diecast box containing a Pluto, which mysteriously then connects automatically first time. Amazing. We should all do that. So uh, I went to a workshop and I made something. So I made a, I made a device, which uh, G7, G7 NTG should be playing, not me. There you go. It's a cigar box guitar. Somebody else mentioned just now a, uh, a load for testing power supplies. Well, I, I use a very simple one which uh, I've been using for years for testing high power audio amplifiers and it's just two whacking great 4 ohm wire wound resistors and a switch on the front which puts them in series or parallel I think I'll, I'll just show I'll just show Jim this uh, picture because he might might be interested in it this is uh, this is the PA uh, that I made up yeah and that's the inside of it so um, I follow very much the pictures that um, uh, that Jim provided of his in the write-up. Okay, 70 cents cavity, and it's been turned into one of those. A couple of SMA sockets and some probes. Um, and with a, a single rod, it tunes 24 cents quite happily. Right, good evening all. Uh, literally in from work probably about 10 minutes ago. So, uh, right, a few things to show. Um, and just one last thing before I hand over to David. Uh, let me just show you this. I tweeted this on uh, Twitter the other day, but um, basically this is, I think it must be a switch mode power supply, but it's on 24-7 round here. It's never, ever off. But, uh, that area there is MFS. So uh, with that, I will uh, close the net. But I uh, say uh, thank you very much uh, to everybody for coming on. Look forward to seeing as many of you as possible on the air on uh, Sunday on 70 SEMS. OK. Um, so that's uh, the uh, the QO100 net. Um, clearly, that was a lot of things cut together. Um, but I uh, hope you, it gives you a flavour of uh, what goes on from the uh, very technical to the uh, slightly whimsical. Um, let's go back to, uh, I think it's that one. Uh, share that and back to my slides. Can you see the slides there? Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. So um, this digital ATV stuff, you'll have seen those pictures actually look pretty good quality. Um, I think um, the worst ones there were from David M0YDH, the guy with the uh, uh, cigar box uh, guitar. Um, his pictures over the last year have improved markedly. He's upgraded and he's up to uh, HD now, so uh, done really well. Um, this digital stuff seems a bit complex, but we've tried to uh, make it easy by coming up with some simple uh, do-it-yourself projects. Uh, the first one, which is really the place to get started, is the Minituner USB receiver. Uh, this is the thing at the top right there. It's just a PCB that's about, uh, what, uh, three inches by four inches. And on there is a, a satellite TV tuner, um, a, bit, a few power supply bits, and a USB interface module. Um, that connects to your computer or a Raspberry Pi. Um, and uh, one of the Raspberry Pi applications we've developed is this uh, set-top box receiver, the ride receiver. It can also connect to the ports down um, DAT transceiver. Um, 
We've also got a multi-channel version, which is the Winter Hill. And the, I mentioned earlier um, that uh, you can get sort of 10 stations on the satellite at once. Uh, the Winter Hill will show you four of those at once. And there is uh, one guy who has three Winter Hills and he can see 12 at once. I don't know how he keeps up with what's going on, but anyway. And these projects are all uh, open source and um, maintained by the community. So to get going on receive, you, you, for receiving GV, a normal free-to-air satellite receiver like the one in the picture there can be used and that will receive GB3 GV and anybody who transmits with uh, one mega symbol or more locally. However, for the satellite stuff where people use narrower bandwidth, you need to use that mini tuner. Uh, there it is on the left. It's all um, through hole construction. There's no surface mount. There are a couple of modules that fit onto it. There's the eBay power supply at the top and the USB module at the bottom. Um, but they're pre-made. You don't need to do any uh, surface mount soldering. And we've probably sold parts for about 1,200 of those now. So it's a fairly common build. Uh, on the right there is a picture of the uh, prototype uh, ports down uh, receiver, um, which uses a Raspberry Pi with, with that mini tuner to receive. The ride, this is the set-top box. Uh, you plug a mini tuner into a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you plug the Raspberry Pi into uh, an HDMI display. Uh, and you wire up a um, infrared remote control receiver. And then you use a surplus remote control. Uh, we've got a library of about 40 remote controls already in there. So the chances are, if you've got an old Skybox remote control or something like that, you can use it. Um, I suppose the biggest problem with these at the moment is getting the Raspberry Pis. But uh, I, I'm told Raspberry Pis should be uh, more easily available come later this year. Uh, certainly, there, there do seem to be a few more on the market now. Now, this uh, set-top box will receive anywhere from 144 megs up to uh, 2.4 gigs. And of course, it'll connect to your LNB for um, receiving from the satellite, connect to your satellite dish receiver. All the details of uh, how to build it are on uh, the BATC wiki. And I'll leave a slide up with uh, no, all the links at the end. And I'll send, send that presentation along to Mike to publish. The other way of using this mini tuner is you plug it into a PC. Now, there, are, there used to be only one set of software to use, and that was uh, some French software called uh, MiniTune. Uh, this is uh, Ken G4BVK in Bristol. Um, when I uh, received him when I was at Portable one day uh, on a laptop, um, um, that's his pictures using MiniTuner, and that's quite a complicated interface. There's a lot there to confuse you. More recently, a guy in South Africa has built something called OpenTuner. Uh, this is open source uh, software uh, for a PC, and it's really easy to use, especially on the satellite. Uh, you'll see along the bottom there, there is a uh, spectrum. The, left hand, the lump at the left-hand side is the beacon, and the three lumps at the right-hand side are stations transmitting their pictures. Um, and the one I'm tuned into, you can see it's a bit more shaded, DK3 ASE, and that's his um, uh, test card. And you can tune this re receiver quite simply by clicking on one of the, one of the spectrum lumps. So if you clicked on the beacon, it would show the beacon. If you clicked on any of the others, uh, it would show their, uh, their picture. The uh, spectrum there is uh, actually received at Goon Hilly. We have a ground station at Goon Hilly that pipes it out over the internet. So uh, that is available on a website for anybody. Um, we use that for coordinate 
coordinating to make sure nobody transmits over the top of each other or to whinge when they do. Now, I've mentioned the ports down a few times. I don't know, has anybody heard of the ports down before? Yeah, a few of you. Good. I'm glad to hear that as, <laughs> as I'm the main designer. Um, the aim of this project was to bring digital ATV to everyone. There are lots of people around who did ATV in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, either on amateur, uh, sorry, on, on amplitude modulation or on frequency modulation. Um, and we realized that most of those people aren't very comfortable with, certainly with writing code, but even with configuring software. Um, and uh, it can be quite complex. So um, uh, there was a French guy came up with the basis of the capability to, for a transmitter. And I took that and turned it into something that uh, is really easy to make. You take a Raspberry Pi 4, or it, it, another version will work with a Raspberry Pi 3 if you've got one sat on the shelf. Um, you take a touch screen. Uh, the early versions used a little three and a half inch touch screen. The later versions use a, uh, a seven inch touch screen that's available from Raspberry Pi Foundation. Um, and you control it by the touch screen. You connect an SDR. Now that's either a Lime SDR Mini or a Pluto. Now Lime SDR Minis have tended to price themselves out of the market recently, but the Pluto is uh, well worth it, a uh, really good value for what it does. Using the Mini Tuner, it will also receive. Um, it requires some hands-on construction, but not a lot. You know, you have to wire up the power supply to the screen. You have to uh, connect the screen to the Raspberry Pi, but that's just a matter of putting a ribbon cable in a socket and closing the socket. Um, and the main work actually is putting it in a decent box. And you'll see there, there are some different box solutions. Some people have it on the front panel of a, uh, uh, a standard equipment case. Um, the one in the middle there is my prototype, which is built in a um, outside um, electrical box. And then the one at the bottom is largely 3D printed by Gareth um, G4XAT. But, you know, you put this thing together and it's something you've made yourself. Uh, but it's an easy way to get digital ATV working at low cost. There's the block diagram. So it'll take uh, a C920 webcam. That's the same sort of webcam as I'm using uh, with you tonight or a Pi camera, um, or we can take uh, ordinary video from an old style video camera by using something called an easy cap to capture the video. You also use a mic dongle, one of the cheap eBay ones. I think I've got one within reach there, one of these fellas um, to uh, get the audio in. That all feeds in by USB to the Raspberry Pi 4. Then you use an SDR, either a Lime SDR, Pluto, or there was a specialized ATV one called a DATV Express. Um, and you get RF out of that at about a milliwatt or 10 milliwatts. You can also connect your mini tuner to this for receive. So as I said, covers uh, 50 megs to 3.4 gigs with a Lime SDR. And it does all the ATV formats. It does uh, DVBS, uh, which is less used now because DVBS2 is better. Um, DVBT um, for experimentation. You can vary the symbol rate. It's just a setting on the touch screen. Um, and use webcam, bicam, or video. Receive with the mini tuner. You can also stream to the internet, to the BATC streamers, or display what uh, is coming out from the BATC streamer. Uh, it's got some test equipment functionality. The top uh, picture there is of the Portsdown Band Viewer, which is a sort of simple spectrum analyzer that just covers one band at a time, so you can see who's transmitting. And it can also uh, be a Langstone. Now, this is a project by that's been pushed by the uh, UK Microwave Group. And with a Pluto or a Lime SDR, uh, you just have to add some sort of rotary knob 
uh, or the scroll wheel of a mouse for the tuning. And this will do AM, eh, sorry, do FM, uh, USB, LSB, and CW on all bands from uh, 50 megs up to 5.7 gigs. So a uh, very flexible uh, piece of hardware once you put it together. Very simple to put together. Uh, the thing about the software is you can buy a pre-programmed SD card. So you don't even have to touch any software. You just buy a card. They're 10 quid a piece from the PATC shop. And they come pre-programmed with your call sign on. Uh, any of the hard to get components, we sell a couple of PCBs that uh, do the interfacing that you might want to do. You can get from the BATC shop. Same for the tuner, all the bits come from the BATC, all the hard to get bits come from the BATC shop. And all this, the guide of how to build the thing is on the wiki. Uh, the bottom right there shows the uh, touch screen. And uh, when we come back to full screen, you'll be able to see one of mine sat in the corner of the shack here. So that's your um, basic transmitter or receiver. But how do you get this stuff on the air? Well, you use your normal narrowband antennas, preamps and coax, and perhaps even linear amplifiers. Um, so, you know, the ports down is your transmit driver. It gives you about a milliwatt output. Um, you'd put that into a, a PA or a couple of cas cascaded PAs um, and a bit of filtering beyond the PA. Uh, to get, you know, you can run 150 watts of this if you want on two meters or, or oh, sorry, no, you can't. Not on 146 megs because you've got a power limit, but you can run uh, 150 watts on 70 SEMs or 23 SEMs or so on. But you can just use your normal narrowband gear. The uh, linears do need to be a bit more linear than you'd use for SSB um, because the, the transmission is a bit more demanding. On the receive side, you'd use your standard aerial, but you probably need an extra preamplifier because the this tuner is designed to come after a satellite LNB that's got lots of gain. And you probably want to think about a band pass re, re, filter on receive because the receiver is wide open otherwise. For the higher uh, microwave bands, most people just use their standard narrowband transverter, which has an IF of 146 or 437, and you just plug your uh, that straight into the receiver and you plug the uh, DATV transmitter straight into that, having sorted out the levels. And you can transvert easily to 10 gigs or 24 gigs. Uh, with very simple modification, just so that you don't have to put the, the two watts or so that you get out of your ICOM or Yezu rig, uh, you just uh, modify it to take a couple of milliwatts. Now, I mentioned the BATC uh, quite a lot uh, during this. Um, the BATC, we've got about 1,450 members at the moment. Uh, worldwide, um, uh, just over a thousand of those members are in the UK, but a good proportion are overseas. Uh, we publish a quarterly magazine called CQTV um, and promote activity days and cont contests. But we have really moved into the online realm. Um, all the information about our projects gets put on our BATC wiki, which is available to everybody. You don't have to be a member for that. The same with the forum where you can ask, ask questions and get them answered by people who might be experts. Um, again, you don't have to be a member. If you're interested with ATV, in ATV, you can have an account. The members shop is for all those hard to get bits. And we do PCBs, we sell the, uh, the actual tuner module. Um, anything that you'd need to buy in bulk, for example, there's one of the power supply uh, chips we use, which you can only get in batches of 100. So we buy 100 and we sell them uh, one at a time at um, non-profit. And our aim really is to build this active community, which provides help and support. 
Uh, BATC membership is just eight pound a year for the uh, if you just want the PDF magazine to download. Um, if you want a, a nice paper copy, it's twenty pounds a year, and that, the difference is quite simply postage costs, which are uh, becoming increasingly crippling. Uh, we run a uh, in-person convention once a year. Uh, generally, the middle, not too far from you, actually, at the East Midland Air Museum at Coventry. Um, and uh, we also run an online lecture day when the lectures look very much like uh, what I've done tonight, only a little more advanced uh, with the latest uh, of what's going on uh, about once a year every October. So that's more or less it. Uh, I think ATV could be everybody's next challenge. Uh, there's been an awful lot going on recently uh, with uh, the uh, availability of the QR100 satellite has really uh, given it wings. Um, almost everything is open source. There is nothing uh, to stop you uh, taking the software and changing it if you want to. Um, but there is nothing that means you have to use, so use software. You can just plug in an SD card and it will work. Uh, there's something for every, everyone. I, I've seen, since I've been uh, heavily involved, seen people join the hobby, unable to uh, wire up a power supply, and they're now building really professional-looking transmitters, uh, one of which got a uh, got the entrant a uh, highly commended in the recent RSGB construction competition. I was quite proud to see, see that it done so well. And th th there's an awful lot in the hobby, you know, from propagation, portable work, antennas, RF design, or studios and cameras if you're into that. So there's plenty of scope. Why not give it a go this winter or this summer even? I didn't spot that when I revised the presentation. Just goes to show. Now, um, if you want more information, most of it is online. Um, we have the main BATC website, which is really uh, the membership portal, where to join up and, and so on. We've got the wiki where we uh, try and publish as much information as possible. The forum I've mentioned where you can ask those questions. Uh, there are a couple of specialist areas of the wiki. Uh, I mentioned 5.6 gigs. There's a whole section on that. There's also a whole section on the Portsdown uh, transceiver system. It's only how, how to build that. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, presentations online on the YouTube, on our YouTube channel. And of course, you can see what's going on on the uh, repeaters on our streamer. But you can also watch the uh, Thursday net. You know, you saw about a minute of the Thursday net. It generally goes on for about a th an hour and a half every Thursday, 8 p.m. Uh, and I actually sh I stream that from what I receive here. So... Uh, lots online and as i say i will send this presentation on uh, so that uh, you can uh, get copies of those hyperlinks uh, before i break for questions uh, this is my portable setup uh, this is all bands from two meters up to 24 gigs all fitted in an estate car um, you can see in the back of the estate car is the uh, operating position with the ports down uh, transceiver there uh, 10 gig or uh, 10, 5.6 and 2.4 gigs dish and a 24 gigs dish. And on the mast there is 23 SEMS, 70 SEMS and uh, two meters and a second 5.6 gigs aerial, all in an estate car. So the days of big out OB vans have gone, even though one of our members does have one. So there we are. Um, that That's that's it. Um, more than happy to take any questions or discuss anything that uh, I've raised. Uh, over to you. I bet you get on and finish my ports down. <laughs> <laughs> right. I did, manage to get a, I did manage to get a cheap uh, Lime SDR off of eBay a few weeks ago. Oh, brilliant. Uh, that'll be good because uh, that's a, that works really well with ports down. Yeah. I was stuck for one. Yeah, you know, the the new ones are uh, close on four hundred quid now, which I'm not impressed yeah. with. Yeah, 
Well, dare I say, I got this one for under a hundred. Well done. That's a real bargain. Yeah, the. Um, I think somebody thought they'd bricked it. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Anyway, I found out how to to do some bits to it. It's back into life again. So I'm up and we're Brilliant. more than happy. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, the port stand has got a number of bits of test gear in it as well uh, that use the Lime SDR. Um, you can uh, look at spectrum and the like, um, measure noise figure. You can do a uh, RF sweep if you use an external power meter and so on. So it's uh, oh, and a signal generator in there as well. So uh, worth looking at all those. I see John's picked up his microphone. Have you got a question for us, John? Uh, you're muted. I can ask you to unmute. Yeah, here we are. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, just um, a term that I've heard three or four times, I think. Uh, what is a, a mega symbol? Is it something like a pixel? Ah, pixel. right. Sorry. A mega symbol. It's the rate that we send digital data. It's a, In practice, it's a bit less than a megahertz. So if we send a uh, signal that's at four mega symbols, it occupies just over four megs of bandwidth. So it's how fast we're sending the digital data. Sorry. Um, so our reduced bandwidth transmissions, we go down to uh, sort of 333,000 mega symbols. So that's about 500 kilohertz of bandwidth we occupy. but that So we're sending a new symbol of digital data that many times a second. Okay, well, why is it called a symbol? Right, <laughs> because each symbol might have a number of bits in it. Now, usually each symbol has two bits of digital data in it. But if you get a stronger signal, you can actually send us five bits of digital data in one symbol. So we're continually sending digital data and trying to get as much across as possible. So each symbol um, has generally two bits of data in it. Mm -hmm. So, so if uh, so your home internet, if you've got one one megabit home internet, you could put that over a 500 kilosymbol um, TV link if you send two, sim two bits of data in every symbol. So it's a way of getting digital data across. So the, uh, the two bits would be a one and a zero. Yeah, I wouldn't know the the two bits can each be a one and a zero. So that one that symbol might be a one and a one. <laughs> that symbol that symbol could be zero and zero, yeah. <clears throat> zero and one, one and zero, or one and one. And that's all decoded in the clever stuff. Right. Yeah. I can't get my head around it. <laughs> well, basically, we're we're squirting digital data across radio. Simple as that. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you don't need to. You don't really need to worry about it. We tend to use mega symbols because we talk about that gives us an idea of the bandwidth. Yeah. Do the professional TV folks do they use that same terminology? Yes. Yeah. Oh, they do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Sky TV is generally transmitted at twenty-seven and a half mega symbols, oh. which is about thirty-two megs wide. Yeah. yeah um, a bit more which is no good for us. <laughs> more familiar with the uh, with the bandwidth rather than the mega. Uh, right. For, Although for, it roughly is the same thing, I suppose. It's roughly the same thing for terrestrial because they use DVB-T. They talk in terms of bandwidth. So for terrestrial TV, it's normally eight megs wide. Yeah. To fit in the old channels, um, and they and those are talked in terms of bandwidth because the yeah. modulation is totally different. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's Fine. a couple of thousand carriers in that, but we won't go into that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's give somebody else a turn. Okay, John. <laughs> yep, on the left. You mentioned that you do contests. Yeah. 
I, I kind of know what goes on in a normal contest amateur radio. What what do you do on, with the TV contest? Okay, with the TV contest, um, essentially the same as you do for radio contest. You're trying to make as many contacts as possible, and um, it's points <laughs> per kilometer. But the con the contact is proved by having uh, received four numbers that are only sent over video. So in the old days, people used to write them on a bit of card. Now we use digital caption generators to put up four big numbers on the screen. Um, and you generally, you'd have talk back and the guy will read you back for some of your numbers. He won't read you back your numbers because somebody else might hear them and then you, you can get fraud. They will say your numbers add up to 20. Um, but it, it's contesting, but it's not contesting in the 59001, you're done sort of thing. It's, uh, you know, each contact can, it can be as quick as one minute, but generally they take about 10 minutes. So it's a lot more chatty and friendly. Um, you <coughs> I came second last year. I'm trying to remember how many contacts in 24, sorry, in 48 hours, I think I had about 30 contacts. So it's not high pressure stuff. It's a nice day out. Mm. And uh, the, the setup I showed you from the car, that was day two of one of the contests. I'm not sure how you get it all in your car. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I did on one occasion make the uh, um, offer my wife a lift when I was going out for a contest and then realized, no, there isn't room for her. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> so yep. can you can you make an estimate of roughly what's the cheapest way to be able to get in and started? The, the cheapest way to get started is to build a mini tuner for receive and use it with your existing PC and start receiving amateur TV. And then you'd move on to building a ports down transmitter uh, with help from across the table there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you see, so you you then start with a Raspberry Pi four um, and a touchscreen. Let me show you this one. I'm not sure how much this is wired up to. There you go. That, that there is one of them. Um, that's the the touchscreen you can see there, um, and that's got a Lime SDR on the side of it. In fact, one somebody had blown up that uh, is still not very well, but occasionally works. Um, but uh, probably the cheapest way to get going is a Pluto, unless you're really lucky with flying, finding a, a Lime SDR. But it's well worth getting a mini tuner and having a look at what's going on first on the receive side. Club's got one, by the way. Oh, OK. All right. And a <laughs> I can't remember how big this is. It must be at least a metre. Yeah, yeah. Will you be a, uh, have you got somewhere you can permanently set that up for Cure 100? That's the intention. Yeah. It's been donated to us by one of the local amateurs left the area. Yep. And uh, we, we, you can probably see on the table, we've got the HF beaming bits. We're currently uh, doing a big refurb of the building. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the jobs that will get done. The, the dish will get put up on the building. Good. We're, good. we're lucky enough to have our own premises. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That's really good. Uh, it's worth uh, having a try at just doing a temporary <coughs> setup um, beforehand. You know, you, as long as you can stably put the dish in one place, you can do it essentially portable. What, uh, what sort of position is Q, Q100? Uh, it's pretty. It's within two degrees of the same satellite as Sky. Oh, so, so, so it's over to the east then. Yeah. So if you can see, if you can see the bit of bit of sky for Sky, uh, you you're pretty sure of being able to see the bit of sky for Cure One Hundred. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they won't bump into each other, will they? 
no 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 they're a good few thousand miles apart but uh, but it's great because people think you've just got a big sky dish yeah mm -hmm. or a second sky dish <laughs> yeah yeah is, is there much activity on q100 kv wise yeah yeah i yeah. mean the it is very rare not to see at least one station on there. And uh, the beacon is is on 24-7. So there is always a TV picture there. It might be the same one. It might be the beacon. But there's always a picture there. Let's, uh, in fact, hang on a minute. Let's, um, uh, I can show you what activity there is at the moment. Hang on a minute. Let's just close a few of these. Let's close that fella uh, and open the browser. Um, Exhale two wideband monitor. I bet. Oh no, I was going to say I bet be fooled now, and there won't be anybody there. Let's share this screen. So this is the um, the play out from Goon Hilly, and on the left hand side there, you can see the the beacon with the square around it, and these are two other stations. Um, they're both 333 kilo symbols, um, so about 500 kilohertz wide, up at the top end of the band. And what we use with it is a text chat. So if you want to get in touch with either of these guys, you can text chat to them. Um, have I got the tuner plugged in? Yes, I have. Just hang on a minute. Um, <laughs> let's do, uh, where is it? It's that one there. Now, this might work. It might not work. Is the text chat on the internet or on the satellite? It's on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, it's hosted on our server at Goon Hilly. You see somebody there is having a transmitter problem of some sort um, mm -hmm. on the right-hand side. You know, this is not going well. I had hoped this would work and I could show you something. Let's try one more go, a different way of opening this app, this receiver. I might be able to show you one of those uh, stations. Um, it's in, just find the right folder for it. Please see, open tune. It's going to work this time. Right, let's stop that share and share a different screen, uh, which is that fellow there. Share. Now, this is Open Tuner that I was showing you earlier. Can you see that screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we connect to the tuner. And again, you've got this spectrum along here, and this is showing the, the video from the beacon. If I click on this guy here, the receiver will now go to the pictures he is transmitting, and that's what he's transmitting. Um, who is it? It's IW9GUR, somebody in Italy. Um, mm. in, in Monday night, actually, is the Italians have their net, and he's showing some portable operation. So that's the sort of stuff you get on the on the satellite. I can click on this guy here. I suspect he'll be another Italian. Um, yeah, IU4 GAV, and he's showing a composite of uh, four pictures uh, there. So that's the sort of stuff is there nearly all the time. Uh, so it, it's been really good for amateur TV. <laughs> There's always some sort of activity there. Why is the beacon so wide? Um, it's so wide. Um, you remember I said that um, commercial receivers can only receive one mega symbol or above. It's wide so commercial receivers can receive it. Um, we have made it as as narrow as we as we dare, really. Oh, so, yeah. um, but it's a, it's to reduce the uh, the entry level, effectively. Oh, what is that? Is it about, is that about what uh, eight gigs? Is it? 
so uh, eight megs a meg. So the bandwidth there is nine megs. Yeah. So the beacon's using just over one and a half. Um, I'm still going to try and show you that other station, but they've disappeared now. Um, the beacon's using just over one and a half, and these are using about half a meg each, the other two. But that uh, this is on a 1.2 metre dish in my garden, but you get the same picture of a 90 centimetre dish. So, so what, what size did you say yours was, Dave? 1.2. 1.2. No question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 1.2. Oh, okay. Um, but you get the same off a night uh, pictures off a 90 cm. Let's see what this guy down here is doing. See, I've just clicked on him. The previous picture disappears, and that is DL5 OCD. But I'm not getting the ah. There are some people testing a new modulation scheme that this receiver doesn't work with. So that was a bad example. I need to upgrade this receiver. But uh, anyway, that, that gives you an idea of, uh, of how easy it is to receive um, with, just with a PC, um, a mini tuner, and the dish you've got sat outside. <laughs> Any other questions for me? Not for me. I just get on and do what I've yeah. got to do. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, okay then. Well, what I'll do, I'll, I'll send this um, a, a PDF of this presentation through to Mike so they can share it with you all. And all the links are there. Uh, but if you uh, take a look around the wiki and uh, if you feel like joining the BATC, uh, do so. All the old CQTVs are, are, are available on our website. The ones in the last two years are only available to members because we have to give them something for their money. Uh, but we're not like the RSGB where we won't let anything go on the internet. <laughs> Okay, thank well, you thank you very much, much Dave. Yeah. It's really well, thank interesting. You. It's uh, let me back off again. I've got half a course down, but uh, I've been for about three years. Sadly, right. so uh, yeah, we'll make it a project, I'm sure. Good. And if one of the things is, if you want uh, funds for a club station. The BATC uh, do have some bursary funds available for capital expenditure for community projects such as club stations. Oh, so, interesting. So, uh, I mean, don't, the club would have to be a member. Sorry? So is that, is that the, with the club being a member? Uh, as long as one of your members is a member, oh, that's fine. Oh, yeah. So we've got no objection to join as a club, but uh, no, that sounds interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you were, if clearly it'd be ideal for you to join as a club and get the paper magazine so that people could actually see the magazine sort of thing. Um, but we're quite happy to provide a bursary to help you get set up, uh, certainly for QO100 Receive, um, if you need any bits. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, make a mental note. There must be at least two of us that are members of BATC. Yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, it's all, yeah, it's all about it, it's all about getting BA, uh, get, it's all about getting TV out there. You know, if it gets more publicity. Uh, we're doing a similar thing with um, the Bletchley Park uh, radio station. Um, the, the amateur radio station down there, they're getting received capability, you know, to try and spread the word. Great. Well, they didn't. Have, they didn't have satellites during the war. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be good if they did have. Yeah. No particularly synchronous ones. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay then, I'll, I'll leave you to it. Thank yeah, you very much for listening. Roll back to us, please, Dave. Yeah, we'll do. Many thanks. Yeah. yeah thank, thank you very much, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Thank you. No. <laughs> Question is, how do I pass control back to you? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Don't ask me. <laughs> there should be on the side uh, the thing that says uh, who's present. A green text change. Uh, uh, okay. What does it say? Participants. Participants. Yeah. Oh, hang on. You'll have to join the club at this rate, Dave. Oh, it's next week. <laughs> Participants. Uh, hang on. <laughs> God. And there's, there's me at the top, I think, Dave Carter. Yeah. Right. Well, okay. And I go make host. There you go. Yeah. Brilliant. That's Thank it. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Good night, all. Brilliant. Thank Good night. Don't let all this get in the way of your am tour, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's just another box. John. <laughs> is this recording? I'm hoping it is. I'm just going to... If you stop it, it's just tell well, you where it is. It right. says in the left-hand corner that it's recording. It's just your <sighs> Sandra. I think it's after you've closed it, you can go back to the room.